International travel is by and large a no-go these days, and interstate travel is pretty risky as well. Those plans you made months ago might be thrown out if border closures happen at short notice. But that doesn't mean you can't get away on an awesome holiday in your own backyard. You don't have to cross any borders and you don't even have to get on a plane. I'm talking about the return of the Great Australian Road Trip Holiday. We're currently at a place called Lake Wallace. It's about two and a half hours drive west of Sydney. This is a beautiful location itself, but we're not sticking around. This is just the start of the journey. We're heading out into some lesser known parts of New South Wales, a quiet little town which I personally love, and there are some great camping spots nearby as well. Let's go hit the road. This journey starts in Sydney, heading westward across the Blue Mountains and into the New South Wales Central West region. And once you're across those mountains, there are many lesser travelled back roads you can choose from. For this trip, we're in a 2021 Nissan Navara STX dual cab, which is fresh from a recent midlife update. Pricing for this specification starts from $58,270 before on-road costs, but ours has a few optional extras like the ladder rack and tub liner, which works well for both tradies and weekend warriors. And we've also got the leather interior and sunroof pack, as well as a genuine Nissan snorkel. Under the bonnet is a 2.3 litre twin turbo diesel engine, which makes 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters and it uses a claimed 7.9 litres per 100 kilometres on the combined cycle. We all know how popular the four-wheel drive ute is in Australia these days. And I think it's for good reason. Compared to the sort of ute you would get 10 or 15 years ago, these things are much more comfortable, they're more refined, they're efficient, got a lot of safety and technology as well. So for things like the daily grind, weekend running around the place, that sort of thing, these things are comfortable and practical. But I think you really start to appreciate a four-wheel drive ute on the longer runs as well. These sorts of roads, country roads, different road surfaces, potholes and that sort of thing, you don't really have to worry about things like punctures or bottoming out or scraping. You've got a full-size spare on board, you've got lots of room for all your gear. This really is the perfect road tripping car. And then, when you do start travelling around, doing a bit of adventuring, that sort of thing, you leave the highways behind, you leave the bitumen behind, you start to find some really cool parts of Australia. And that's what we're doing today. We're not doing any hardcore four wheel driving. I probably won't even engage low range or the locking differential, to be honest with you. But it does mean you can't find some really cool spots. This is one of my favorite campsites coming up here. I'm really keen to get there, actually. It's a beautiful day today. We've lucked out with the weather. We're making good time as well, which is always good. So we're gonna spend a few quality hours at camp pretty soon. We're turning off the Great Western Highway before we hit Bathurst and are heading to an area called Wattle Flat. One thing you should think about when you're on your own road trip is supporting the local businesses and services that you'll come across on the road. While it's easy and convenient to fill up with fuel and load up the Esky and buy any additional gear you need before taking off in cities, consider doing it while you're out there in the bush. Drop into the local pub instead and find a small out of the way service station that's nowhere near as busy as the city counterparts and spend your hard earned money there instead. Yes, it might be a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. Small businesses just like these ones, the Waddle Flat service station and the Royal Hotel in Safala haven't had the easiest of times amidst things like pandemics and bushfires. And they really depend upon and appreciate the support of travelers passing through and spending a few dollars. That's what we did anyway, and with the afternoon getting on, it wasn't long before we were in the historic little gold mining township of Hilland. This town dates back to 1860, and during a boom fueled by a proper gold rush in the 1870s, up to 8,000 people called Hilland home. During its busiest time, Hilland boasted two newspapers, five banks, eight churches and 28 pubs. Nowadays it's much quieter, but there's still plenty on offer for tourists. 
historic buildings and landmarks, mine tours and the local museum is just a start. The last standing pub, also called the Royal Hotel, is worth a visit and it offers accommodation to visitors. But we weren't staying in town because there was a riverside campsite nearby with our name on it. We've driven through historic Hill End and now we're at the equally historic Bridal Track. And this is going to take us down to the river and the beautiful campsites by the Macquarie and the Turon Rivers. You'll get to this sign here and it might put some people off, but don't worry too much. It's not too challenging of a drive. We're not going to use things like locking differentials to get down there. It's a fairly straightforward drive, but you do need to keep your wits about you because it is a fairly steep descent and there's not much to catch you if you do come off the track, but it's all pretty straightforward. We'll show you when we get there. The bridal track originally earned its name because of its rugged nature. Those travelling on horseback once upon a time would prefer to walk the track rather than ride it, leading their horse by the bridle. This track drops down gradually to the Macquarie and Chiron rivers with steep and rocky terrain giving away to nice, flat, grassy riverside areas. Once upon a time, this area would have been busy with prospectors eagerly panning and mining for gold, but now it's much quieter. Frequented only by campers, keen for a few days of relaxing and unwinding by the river. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're setting up a simple camp with swags, collect some firewood and just enjoyed our surroundings for the rest of the evening. You can do some walks in this area and a bit of exploring around the old mining relics. You can try your hand at fishing or maybe even a bit of gold panning. But we just skimmed some rocks across the river, had a fish ourselves and enjoyed the company of the fire. And that's just the ticket when you want to relax in your own slice of nature. For me, this is what it's all about, and this is why a dual cab ute is such a popular vehicle in Australia today. Yes, it's a good family car, they're much safer, more reliable, all that sort of thing than the older vehicles, but they can take you away to cool places of Australia, just like this beautiful spot by the river. You can take the family camping, you can go do wood runs, you can do all of that fun stuff in a car that you use during the week as well. We're here on the banks of the Turon River. It's a beautiful spot. There's no one else around as well. And it's taken us around four or five hours to drive here. It's been a beautiful drive and it's not too challenging. Anyone could get out here and visit places like this. You don't have to jump on a plane. You don't have to cross any borders, but you can still have a great time. If you've enjoyed this video, hit like and hit subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're there. Also, let me know in the comments below, what's your favourite camp spot in Australia? I'd be keen to hear and I promise I'll keep it a secret. And of course, head over to drive.com.au for the full story and all of our new car content.